Hello everyone, welcome to this video tutorial on data mining. In today's video, we will discuss about the objective function that is used by k-means clustering algorithm. So for the objective functions, which measures the quality of a clustering, in k-means clustering, the objective function is known as the sum of the squared error or SSE or in some cases, it is also known as the scatter. Okay, whenever we take the sum of squared error we calculate the error of each data point that is its Euclidean distance to the closest centroid and then compute the total sum of the squared errors you have to always remember that objective function is always associated with the Euclidean distance only so for each point the error is the distance to the nearest cent cluster center and to get the SSA, we square these errors and then sum them up. Okay, so you can see as you can see in this formula. So, given two different sets of clusters that are produced by two different runs of k means, we prefer the one with the smallest squared error since this means that the centroid of this clustering are a better representation of the point in their cluster. So, in case of k-means clustering algorithm if you have two different versions or runs of k-means algorithm you will prefer those particular clustering algorithm in which SSC is minimum generally SSC improves in each iteration of the k-means until it reaches a local or global minima if you consider the previous example as we have seen in the last class in the first iteration SSC will be largest then it will decrease a bit in the second iteration it will decrease a bit in the third iteration then it will its value will decrease in the fourth iteration then in the fifth iteration and it will stop in the sixth iteration because it has find out the local or the global minima fine and what to and the object suppose whenever we are talking about the sum of the squared error if you take this these are the data points so in some in one case we have taken k value of k equal to 3 so these are the three clusters 1 2 and 3 and in in the other run we have taken the value of k equal to 4 the number of cluster is 4 so 1 2 3 and 4 so as you can see uh, your ssc we will prefer prefer those particular those partition suppose this or this in which SSC will be minimum okay so if you compute the SSC you can find that SSC I think will be minimum in which case that will be considered as the optimal clustering actually generally I think this will be the it will have a lower SSC value and we will consider this will be to be better as compared to this particular clustering algorithm okay so one problem that is which always with the k-means clustering is that whenever we are choosing the initial centroid so this is a very important stage space because choosing the proper initial centroid is the key step of the basic k-means procedure okay so generally we whenever we choose the initial centroid we switch randomly but randomly selected initial centroid may be poor okay so what can be the solution to the initial centroid problem one solution which is particularly used or popularly used to address the problem of choosing initial centroid is to perform multiple runs and each with a different sets of randomly chosen initial centroid and select the set of clusters with the minimum sum of squared value so that is the first case fine Another if effective method is to take a sample of points and then cluster them using a hierarchical clustering technique. K clusters are extracted from the hierarchical clustering and the centroid of those clusters are used as the initial centroid. This approach is often works well but is practical only if the sample is relatively small and K is relatively some small compared to the sample size. In another approach for selecting this initial centroid what we do we will select the first point at random or take the centroid of all points then for each successive initial centroid select the point that is the furthest or 
very distant from any of the initial centroid already selected. So in this way we obtain a set of initial centroid that is guaranteed to be not only randomly selected but also be well separated. Okay? But you have to remember one thing that uh, such approach can select outliers rather than points in dense regions. Okay? And it is also expensive to compute the furthest point from the current set of initial centroids. So this is an another drawback of k-mean clustering algorithm is that because it is very difficult to select the initial centroid. K-means clustering is a simple and can be used for a variety of data types. Okay? It is a it is also an quite efficient even though multiple runs are often performed. Okay? Some variants of k-means, including bisecting k-means are even more efficient and less susceptible to initialization problems. But k-means have some limitation. So what are the different limitations of k-means is that k-means clustering is not suitable for all types of data. Okay. So what do you mean by all types of data that it cannot handle non-globular clusters or clusters of different sizes or densities. Although it can provide typically find pure subclusters of if a large enough number of clusters are specified okay k means also has trouble clustering data that contains outlier okay outlier detection and removal can help significantly in such situation so if the data has outlier the k means clustering cannot detect those outliers so we have to detect the outlier and removal can help to perform significantly by the k-means clustering algorithm. K-means clustering is restricted to data for which there is a notion of a centroid. Okay? If there is no notion of centroid or center, k-means clustering cannot be applied. Okay? So another problem with k-means clustering is that, which is commonly known, that k-means clustering can handle empty clusters. So what do I mean by empty clusters? This is the problem that is related with the basic k-means clustering algorithm is that empty clusters can be obtained if no points are allocated to a cluster during the assignment steps. If this happens then a strategy is needed to choose a replacement centroid since otherwise the squared error will be larger than necessary. Fine. So these are the limitations of k-means clustering algorithm. The, the first one is that it is the initial centroid problem then it can if the data is having outliers it cannot handle we have to remove the outlier first then we can apply k-means it cannot handle this uh, handle non cannot detect non-globular shapes if the data is various densities it cannot detect fine and it also cannot applicable to those that are where there is no notion of centroid So this is you have seen how k-means clustering has some limitations and it has though it is a very simple method for partitional clustering algorithm. In the next class we will study the hierarchical clustering algorithm. Hope you like this video. Thank you very much.